In the world of conservation and restoration, there's what's called the six. Six rule. Six feet away, an instrument should look original. But from six inches away, you can tell it's been worked on. And that's what we're aiming for on this project. But there's a third hidden six. And that's because the devil's in the details. Today we'll look at the process of turning our electric piano's keyboard from drab to fab. Full disclosure, these are ivory keys. Now when we say ivory keys, we're actually talking about the key tops. The key stick itself is actually wood, and there's a thin veneer of ivory glued on top. Now this is certainly the worst keyboard I've ever tried to restore. It's also only the second. Who's ready to learn? This part I'm really excited about because it looks like these keys haven't been out in maybe forever. Sometimes treasures just slip between them and get trapped. I'm numbering as I go so they don't get mixed up. Well, knowing me, they'll still get mixed up, but uh, at least I can count my way out of the problem. Okay, and here's what was underneath. Not that. Lots of key tops. There's one there I can't get to. Ouch. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> 1919. Pretty sure that's before pennies were gluten free. Yep, very cool. And another one down here. Oh, two more. Nineteen sixty-seven. I think that's gluten-free. Yep. And nineteen seventy-seven. Fun. Nice to get paid. Eee. Okay, this is actually tight from about here on. And given how clean the wood is underneath, I think what we'll do is work some glue underneath here and clamp it in place. That way we've got our registration. Now when the time comes to glue on the head, we will use one of these ivory glue wafers. It's a piece of linen coated in a water and heat activated adhesive similar to hide glue. You can also get these in strips for the tail, but since I want to leave this exactly where it is and I don't have any of the liquid glue, we'll take some of the glue off of this wafer and use it under here. These are some of the tools I use when working with ivory key tops. This is my hot plate. It's <laughs> just an iron making contact with an aluminum top. This is a clamp that I use with these clamping calls. This one for heads and this one for tails. Okay, we've got this clamp and some calls on the hot plate warming up. I'll preheat my buddy knife as well, because it makes me feel good about myself. And the instructions say to soak this for 30 seconds. And while that soaks, we can preheat our workpiece. Okay, this is dried overnight. Let's see how we did. Very nice. Okay, with the tail secured, now we can clean up the front part of this key. I'm actually gonna use the mill here to take some of this wood down. I checked and with the new wafer and the key top, it's actually sitting a little higher than this tail. When we glue them down, we wanna make sure that everything's at a nice plane so there's minimal sanding to do. Yep, 
Nice. That's a little high, but I'm going to leave it because I imagine that the glue wafer is going to pull it down. And you'll see some spots didn't clean up at all. These must be low spots from when this thing was hand played with no key top on the key. I'll clean off the grime with some solvents, but I'm going to leave it like that. What matters most is that we get a nice playing field here. Okay, my work pieces are cleaned up. Let's glue it to it. Promising. All right, this has had plenty of time to dry. Let's see how we did. Well, at first glance, it looks good. I'll have a better idea once I get this excess glue off. Now, even though I milled each key stick so that the key tops would be level when I glued them on, there were still plenty of times that I missed my mark and had to sand to level off the head and the tail of the keys. Well, I think there's no better time than now than to talk about one of the most hated and most misunderstood workshop tasks, sanding. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. These are my little sanding blocks for piano keys. I start with 120 grit and I work my way up all the way to 400. And I cut these blocks so they're the same width as my double-sided tape so I can change out the paper more easily. Now because this ivory is so thin, I didn't want to sand any more than I had to, so I kind of snuck up on the low spots. Let's take a look at this highly accurate cross section of our piano key. Here is the tail, and here is the head, and here's the seam between them. Now my goal is to not sand below our lowest point here so that we can retain as much material as possible. So I start with 120. There's still quite a bit to go to get down to here. So I try to do that within the 150 to 180 range. I take off some more. And I keep working my way down, taking off the high spots until we get down to our seam. Here's some 80 grit sandpaper and you can almost see how big those individual grains are. Well I've got an up close cross sectional view of some 80 grit and here it is. You can see each of the grains here protrudes down below the paper and there's space in between those grains for material to pass through. And when you push that sandpaper against your workpiece, you're actually creating troughs in the workpiece or scratches as you remove material. And the goal is not to take off any more material than we have to. Now, of course, that's what I aim for. I know reality doesn't always agree with how things go on paper. I'm sure that's more than you wanted to hear about sanding today, but really we're just scratching the surface. Now, several of these keys were actually missing the head and the tail. I eventually came up with a method for gluing the tail on first in the proper location, not without messing up quite a few keys first. Whoops. Luckily, with a very hot iron, I was able to undo my whoopsies but not without destroying the key tops in the process. Now on some of the keys, both the head and the tail are missing. There's no way to reference as far as where that should go. So I made this little block on the mill, which I can clamp on, and then locates where that tail is gonna get glued on. And a quick warning about heat sources and piano keys. Some key top materials are extremely volatile. Time for a demo. Oh, holy smokes. So just please be careful, okay?
light, it's all back together and it looks like absolute garbage. Now we can proceed to step one, which is remove and clean all existing original white key tops. And to clean them, I'll just use some soapy water. And for the tough spots, I'll use this ultra fine Scotch Brite pad. I'll do the fronts too. And I set up this fan so I could dry them as quickly as possible. Now even with the new keys all cleaned up, I still wasn't happy with them. The newly repaired keys just look too... Newly repaired next to the original untouched keys. I looked into whitening the key tops, but that involved harsh chemicals. So I actually used brown and yellow alcohol dye stains for that authentic diphtherial look. Brown and yellow, isn't that just appetizing to think about? Well, from six feet away, I think it looks pretty good. And from six inches away... I'd say it's a lot better. Any sensible person might be asking, why go through all of that work when you could just strip off all the old key tops and replace them with new key tops, like someone did on this piano? Now imagine, if you will, a 93-year-old person wearing fresh red lipstick, their favorite push-up bra, and perfectly bright white teeth. I'm sorry. That's just not how I picture my grandpa. Well, I'd say we followed the 666 rule pretty well. Now, if we could just get the rest of the piano finished up. For the next video, I think we'll do a Q&A, and if you'd like to weigh in, you can do so over on Patreon. If you want, no pressure.